now, of course, we're an amazingly dominant company in that whole Ohio River Valley region. And with Press McKissick, son of one of my absolute heroes, Linda McKissick, uh, as your regional director, what a wonderful thing. And so thank you for all of you who made who made this possible today and also made Keller Williams possible. Let me tell you what, what I want to do for those of you. I know that many of you probably have joined the company and really don't know Dave Jenks. And I just want to take a minute uh, to say hi. Um, I've been in the real estate business uh, over 30 years. I began in upstate New York uh, with Century 21. I was a director of training for them. I became a regional director for three states out of uh, Rochester, New York. And then they moved me to te uh, Texas and I became a divisional president for Century 21 out of Dallas, Texas. And I saw this little company growing down in Austin and I'm a student of the game. And I watched and I said, you know, if I were inventing a real estate company, it wouldn't be like the one I was with, this big corporate brand driven uh, company, even though we were number one in the world at the time, Century 21, it would be like this company that Gary Keller is building in Keller Williams, very agent focused, very training focused, um, really good financial model with profit sharing. I just, I loved what I saw early. So wasn't it neat that four years later, I get a call from Mo Anderson and she said, Dave, Gary and I would love to have you join us on this team. And so I joined them and we started building Keller Williams University and we got the systems in place and we started to grow and get really good offices like you in Worthington and, and others across the country. And then of course we wrote the best-selling book in the history of real estate, MREA, uh, and then wrote two more best-selling books uh, MREI and shift. Anyway, it was a, it was really fun. And we started with only 2000 agents. So the thing that I want everyone on this call to understand is two things. One is your future is never determined by where you've been or where you are, but where you want to go. We wanted to become the largest real estate company in the world. We wanted to change the industry. And even though we had only 2000 agents there, when I joined Mo and Gary, our vision was to be the, be the real estate company of choice for the best agents, the best owners, and the best um, clients, of course. And look what's happened. We are now number one in the world, astounding. So I say that to you, your career can go as big as you envision it. And I'm gonna give you some clues today as to how to do that. And the second thing I want you to know is I honor you for being here because one of the things that Gary Keller and I understood as we were building Keller Williams University was that the highest achievers are learning based. The highest achievers in any profession, but certainly in real estate are learning based. They take every opportunity when they have an opportunity like this to hear from one of the icons of the real estate industry, author and teacher, uh, they are gonna take the opportunity to gain the wisdom from this. So thank you for being here. I, I'm honored to be here and I, I honor you for being here. Now, let me tell you what we're gonna do. It, I, the, the title says magic comes in threes. And this is one of those things I learned early from Floyd Wickman, uh, the founder of Sweat Hogs and the founder of uh, just a great trainer. He said, Dave, magic comes in threes. We remember things in threes. He said, if you're doing a sales presentation, give them three things to remember. Uh, he said, if somebody comes out of a seminar and you say, what three things did you get? They'll tell you the three, um, because three is a memorable number, even more, even though Gary Keller says it's the one thing. The truth is we all believe in using a one, three, five. So it's three priorities that get you to your one thing. So one, three, five is powerful. And I'm going to do three things today. I'm going to talk with you about the fundamentals of building your real estate career and getting right after it right now. It'll put an extra 10 or $20,000 into your pocket this year. And then who knows multiples of that beyond this year. And then I'm gonna give you a look at three resources that you probably haven't fully, fully understood and gotten into. And then finally, I'm gonna tell you three ways that you can build your mental resilience and mental toughness in what is a tough game real estate is a tough game. So let's get started. Magic comes in threes. Floyd said, Dave, remember when we talk to sellers, we say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, my job is to get you the most money in the least time with a minimum of inconvenience for you. For buyers, he said, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, 
I want to get you a home that it, you'll love, that's affordable in the right time with a minimum of inconvenience to you. And the fundamentals of personal health, we know those, nutrition, exercise, and rest. Eat right, eat healthy, get the right vitamins, don't eat too many calories, exercise regularly four or five times a week for a half an hour or so, and then rest. Get your seven and a half, eight, eight and a half hours of sleep every night. And a lot of things people mistake is that rest is the most important of those three, because if you don't get enough rest, you'll eat too much and exercise too little. So we know the fundamentals and then applying them in our life becomes the challenge. And the founding of this great American free uh, enterprise a democratic republic founded on a commitment to individual life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right in our Declaration of Independence. Powerful, powerful, built the, one of the most abundant, free uh, countries in the history of the world and became a model for others. And of course, it's being challenged right now. And we're going to have to stand up if we believe in these things right now. Um, and all of our universe, our three-dimensional universe consists of um, atoms that are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. They ask um, this uh, famous psychologist, uh, or a famous physicist, uh, they said, what one thing would you say is true of the universe? And he said, everything is made of atoms. And all atoms are made of a nucleus of protons and neutrons and with electrons spinning around. And everything in the universe is just another combination. Uh, every element in the universe, all 94 elements are made up of just a different number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, but, and time consists of three phases, the past, the present, and the future. And as I said, your, your, your future is not determined by your past or your present, but the vision you have that you have for the future. So be, you can learn from the past, you can take action in the present, but have your vision on the future. And then all creativity, we, we are created in God's image, God the creator, of the universe and then we are meant to be creative beings and we create and manifest things all about us through three things thought word and deed first we think it then we say it or write it and then we do it it's amazing and by the way this is how planning works i'm here in plano texas i just did a a, 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 a session for them on getting what you want and it's all about this first you think it that's why all our books begin with how Someone thinks who's a millionaire real estate agent or millionaire real estate investor. First, we get it clear in our mind. Then we convert that into written goals or written words like we did with MREA. And then that leads us to take action and we make things happen. So those are the three magic steps of getting what you want, thought, word, and deed. And then Keller Williams has three fundamental company values, God, family, and then business. You know, we're not politically correct. We just say this is the this is the priority. And as you know, we don't sell a particular religion because at Mo's inspirational morning at Family Reunion, uh, she has representatives from five or six of the world's largest religions come and open with a prayer. What we believe is that your relationship with your God, with your higher power, uh, with the creator is a big deal. It creates your sense of values. It creates your purpose and it creates your big why. So, God, then family, the loved ones, people who are counting on you, people you care about. Akella Williams is a great family. We call it family reunion because we care about each other, and that gives us a strength that no other company has. And then, and then it's business, and it's, not, it's business is third, but it's not that it's yeah. unimportant, because it's our work where we use our God-given skills to serve others, and therefore, you know, help them get what they want, and then we get what we want, and as Gary Seller, Gary Seller said, by the way, there's Chris Ohio is talking in the background, we need, we need the community. So we got noise coming in, so great, thank you. Um, so just we'll watch those mutes because uh, we don't want any eruptions for those that are listening here. That's great. So then, by the way, business, it's our work where we use our God-given talents to serve others and get paid for it. And as Gary Keller says, fund our mission in life. So again, magic comes in threes. By the way, remember this right here on this page. Real estate is a local business. It's always been local. It is local. Regulations are local. Values are local. Demographics are local. Economics are local. It's all a local business driven by agents with their what? Relationships, reputation, and trust. 
I want you to get that in your mind. All this technology has made things confusing. All these big national corporations trying to get into the real estate business. It still comes down to relationships, reputation, and trust. The number one thing sellers and buyers want is trust. And they will take it based on people they know, relationship, or are referred to reputation. Relationship, reputation, and trust. This has not changed, by the way. There are fundamentals in real estate that are timeless. This is it. You, if you build your relationships, if you build a local reputation, if you gain a sense of trust, you can take your business as big as you want to. Now, there's three things to focus on right now in your business. And they're a third, a third, a third, in my view. One third of your time is on serving the current market, your current buyers and sellers, doing business with them. By the way, you can do a deal a week with one third of your time because we've done the study on this and the average time spent with a buyer or seller for our proven agents is 12 hours, 10 to 12 hours between the time they meet them and the time they get them in a home. Now you can do a lot of other things, but you can do a deal a week, just this. And that's not even with leverage yet. Leverage is a different thing. It takes you to a higher level. We'll talk about that in another time. But number, so one third of your time is serving the market that's there and preparing for the one that's coming. One third of your time is on lead generation. We say it in MREA, we say it in everything we teach. Five, three hours a day, five days a week, 15 hours on lead generation every week. If you go to page 79 of the book Shift, it tells you what to do in those three hours. But if you will do that, you're, you will be unstoppable in the business. I promise you that. And the key to it is building your database. We say your database is your business. With command, we have the world's best real estate database, but we have to fill it with information. And let me give you a little clue on this. This is a little bonus session from Gary Gentry. Gary Gentry uh, is the agent who closed the first deal ever in the history of Keller Williams back in 1983. And he and his wife, Melody still run a great team in Austin, Texas. And he said, Dave, I built my whole business on relationships. I built it on my database. At first, I didn't quite get it. And then I learned from you and Gary, my database is my business. And I started to use it. But he said, most agents don't get this. And he said, they miss the key step. He said, you guys teach that it's capture, connect, and convert. Capture, connect, and convert. But he said, agents leave off the capture part. He said, here's what I know. I, in half an hour, I can learn more about somebody than anyone else I know. I ask great questions. Uh, I listen carefully. Uh, they trust me. I ask probing questions. And so I come out of that half hour meeting knowing more about them than probably most other people know. But if, but a half an hour later, I may have forgotten half of it. And eight hours later, toward the end of the day, I may have lost 80% of it. And he said, tomorrow I might even meet them and forget their name. So he said, here's the thing that I really recommend that you absolutely have to do. You have to capture it. So what I do is after every time I leave a meeting with someone, if it's short, like I meet them somewhere out in, in the public or I meet them for an actual formal meeting, doesn't matter. After I've met them and, I, and I, as soon as I'm turned away from them, I open up my cell phone and I hit record. And he said, in two or three minutes, I download everything I learned about them, where they came from, where they live, um, their, of course, their name, uh, their spouse's name, their kids' names, their pets' names, uh, you know, what they're interested in, all of that. And I download that. I can download that fast because I'm verbal in two or three minutes. I send that audio file to my assistant and, and that assistant puts it up in my database. So, so I capture it. Every time I meet somebody new, I capture it. Now, he said, this is the fun part. I'll call them back because I always follow up with people. And I'll pull their file up on the screen and I'll say, Mary, how's your boy doing down at AM? And how's your dog Scotty that you took to the vet doing okay? And that trouble you were having with Mr. Smith at work. Uh, did you get that worked out? Great. And they know that I know them and we're bonded. We're bonded for life. I am their realtor because I know them and I, I've got this information on them in my database right in front of me on my screen. But he said, here's where the magic happens. See, he said it's 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 capture, connect, now it's convert. What do I do? After I've called them two or three times, that information I have, and I update it every, after every call, if there's something new, I verbally download that and it gets added to the file. But he said, here's the thing. He said, after I've talked to them three or four times, I convert that information to my computer up in my head, 
Now I have it in my computer. And he said, I'll meet them out somewhere and I'll, I'll ask them all the questions and have this information, have wonderful conversations with them because I now have it in my memory. So he said, remember, it's build your database, it's capture it, connect with them and convert it. So this is a big deal. That's a third of your time, lead generation, targeted to your database. And then any other thing, by the way, and we, we say in page 79 of the book Shift, how to use that three hours. So check that out. Now, one third of your time is on learning, knowledge and skill building. And here's why. This is not an easy sport. People will come up to Gary and I and they'll go, oh, you know, it's not rocket science. So we go, oh, yes, it is. At the highest level, real estate is rocket science. It's brain surgery. The knowledge you have to have is immense. The skills you have to build that most people don't have are very difficult. The discipline you have to have to compete in a free market like this is. This, this is a, probably the most competitive industry that exists. And so to do all of that is not easy. And there's a wonderful book uh, called The Warrior Elite, The Warrior Elite by Dick Crouch. And it's about the training of Navy SEALs, special forces, and not just the six, six weeks they have to train hard and go through hell week to earn to be a Navy SEAL, but it's after they've got their trident and now they spend 18 months training for every six months in the battlefield. 18 months for every six months. And, and we know great athletes spend hours and hours and hours of building their skill, hitting their golf balls, shooting three-point shots, doing their skating routine compared to the amount of time that they're actually competing in it. So all great professions demand a real dedication to your own development, knowledge, and skill building. And a lot of people come into real estate thinking they can make it on personality and enthusiasm. And I'm sorry, you can't. You have to learn this business. You have to become competent at the business. Now, competence leads to confidence. So once you get competent, you will be more confident in doing the business. So three things to focus on right now, right there. Service the market, one third. Lead generation, one third of your time learning and skill building, another one third of your time. So there's three areas of professional success. We learned this in the Dale Carnegie Institute. We call it the ask triangle, attitude, skills, and knowledge, attitude, skills, and knowledge. You're paid in any profession for your attitude, your skills, and your knowledge. So let's look at this game we play, this real estate, this tough real estate game. There's three areas of knowledge that we get paid for, our knowledge of contracts, finance, and property evaluation. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm a master of real estate contracts. By the time we get to the end of this transaction, there will be 75 or 85 pages of legal documents that I will review on your behalf. And I'll make sure they're accurate, filled out right, no mistakes, no one's taken advantage of you. And you can be confident in signing those and going to closing. Why? Because I'm a master of real estate contracts. So you wanna be able to talk like that. So you need to master contracts, you need to know all the contracts, all the addendums, all the disclosures, all the legal procedures. You can't know too much about the legal side of this business. And when you know that, it makes you more competent and you feel more confident and you know you deliver good service. So you have to learn that. Number two is a top uh, agents say that the one mistake that new agents make is they delegate too much of the financing to their mortgage officer. And certainly you delegate the pre-approval and you, de you delegate the application and the underwriting and all of that, but not the knowledge. You must have the knowledge of all of the options people have for, for financing a home. And you know it on behalf of the seller and on behalf of the buyer, so financing. And then the second area of knowledge we get uh, paid for is our property evaluation. We really know the market. We know what's happening with pricing. We know it neighborhood by neighborhood. We know what makes homes valuable. And we can say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, by the way, I'm a master of property evaluation. I know all of the homes and I know I'm not a licensed appraiser, but I am better than they are at predicting what a home will sell for. And more important than that, I know how to make a home more competitive and more beneficial so you can get more money for it. The reason I can do that is I'm a master of property evaluation. So you need to become a master of property evaluation. You just need to do it. It's, it's the game. It's what we get paid for. It's our professional. And that's not easy to learn the market, to learn what homes are worth. Um, I, I remember traveling around 
Ahwatukee, Arizona with Mike Mendoza, top agent in all of Keller Williams for three straight years. And he would, he'd point to homes and, and he would say, okay, that one sold. And he would tell me three years ago, that one sold two years ago. Here's what it sold for. Here's what it's worth now. He could drive around his whole neighborhood and tell you the history of almost every property, as well as probably what it's worth today. That's the mental acuity he had. And boy, was he confident in front of sellers. And he took 170 listings a year himself, personally. So we had a, when we taught Camp 443, which was before Ignite, when Gary and I invented Camp 443 for new agents, and we did a video introduction to each of those sessions, we had a formula that we said, if you follow this formula for two years, you cannot fail out of real estate. If you do this every week, uh, you know, 50 weeks a year or 48 weeks a year, um, for the next two years, your, your, your success in real estate is guaranteed. And uh, it, you may go amazingly higher than you ever thought you would. And here's the formula, 10, 5, 15, 5. 10, 5, 15, 5. And that means every day, five days a week, you add 10 people to your database. However you find them, take them from a directory, take them from a neighborhood, um, just meet people, um, get their name, their phone number, their, their email address, their address. Anyway, 10 new people a day into your database, priority. Second one is call five people you know and remind them that you're in real estate and use it. You know, your, your success in real estate will be in direct proportion to the number of people who, when they think of real estate, Think of you. We call that mind share. We have it in MREA. We call it mind share. You want to have the mind share of more people when they think of real estate, they think of you. So call your friends and say, by the way, when you think of real estate, think of me. That's how you end the phone call. Great talking with you. By the way, when you think of real estate, think of me. Put that idea out there with more and more people. So that's 10-5. Then 15 is thank you notes. Send out 15 thank you notes a day handwritten, typed, whatever it is, but thank people that have served you, thank people you've talked to, thank people you've met. can be a short little note, thank you just goes so far in bonding you with people. So 10, 5, 15, and the final five is preview five properties. Go visit five properties. Do it online, do it personally. Um, do a CMA on each of those five. See what you would list it at. And then if you know the agent that listed it, talk with them why they listed it, what they listed it. But get in the practice of doing CMAs and doing them quickly uh, and knowing what's going on in the market. So 10, 5, 15, 5, it's a great formula, still, still, still works. Um, and by the way, there's the three areas you need to know, contracts, finance, and property evaluation. That's why a third of your time is spent in training and personal development. All of this is about training, training yourself in your knowledge. That, now there's skills. Now there's three, the three, the three top skills of real estate agents. Number one, asking for and attracting business. Linda McKissick, who is the OP of your region, she's a powerful lady, but she taught us a lesson. See, I love the Linda McKissick story. She was failing out of real estate in 1991, failing out. She was only making about 15,000 a year. And um, she had three young children. She was ready to leave. And then she said, Dave, I learned you could ask for business. I was waiting for business to come to me. She said, I learned you proactively go ask for business and then you can get it. But she said, here's what I had to learn. You, you have to ask for business and not be attached to the answer. Because if you ask for business, you're going to get a whole bunch of no's and then you'll get some yeses. But the game is to get to yeses. And the only way to get to yeses is through the no's. That's how you do it. She said, I, I'm kind of a sports fan. So I think about a major league baseball player. If a major league baseball player goes to bat and makes seven outs, what are they? An all-star, a multimillionaire, maybe Hall of Fame. Why? They're a 300 hitter, but they made seven outs. She said, I learned there's some sports and real estate is one of them where you get more negatives than you do positives, but you get paid a lot for the positives. So she said, for example, my week, I would make a hundred phone calls. I would get to talk to maybe 30, 35 people. Uh, I would have five, maybe six appointments, and then I would take two or three listings. So that was a lot of activity and a lot of no's to get down to two or three listings, but taking two or three listings a week was a big deal, and that launched my career. And of course, then she took it to the top. So asking for business and not being attached to the answer. But then the second one is chapter four of the book Shift. And she said, later, I learned since I didn't have 
time at that time to call people, I learned how to attract people to me. I learned how to make offers that people would respond to. I learned how to send out mailings, just listed, just sold cards, so that people would call me and then I would convert that into an appointment and, and listings or buyers. So she said, I learned how to be a marketer. First, I learned to ask for business, then I learned how to attract it. So there you are. Those are two skills that you must master. By the way, chapter four of the book Shift has all you need to know about asking for and attracting business. Right there. Now, number two, making effective sales presentations. I remember one of my mentors, Mike Ferry. I went to a big meeting of his, over 2,000 people in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he gets up in front of the meeting and he says, okay, everyone, we get paid for three skills, prospecting, presenting, and closing. Which of those three do you think is most important? How many think it's prospecting? Well, I mean, that's what he teaches. So every hand in the place went up and he said, no, it's not. How many think it's closing, staying in there, answering all their questions, getting them to sign? Well, maybe half the hands went up. He said, nope, it's presenting. He said, until you have mastered your listing presentation, you won't prospect. You won't know your value proposition. You won't know how to answer their questions. Uh, you, you won't have the confidence. You won't prospect. So, and of course, if you don't have a good presentation, then you won't, um, you know, you, 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 no one's going to say yes, or very few are going to say yes to you. So he said, the key to your success in real estate is you must master your listing presentation. Master it. And scripts and dialogues, and there's a whole way to do that. I teach that in the Why List With Me Zoominar that I do, how to build a powerful listing presentation. So you got to work on that. Got to work on that. That's number two skill. The third one is negotiating agreements, bringing about a meeting of the minds. And really the fundamental easy part here is you use the Y4C2Ts of Keller Williams. The rules of engagement, win-win or no deal, integrity, do the right thing, customers always come first, um, be win-win, it's all there. So um, learn how to negotiate. So those are the three skills. By the way, those are not easy to learn. They are not. We play a very difficult sport. It is, it is rocket science. This is a tough game and you need to devote yourself. I recommend you devote yourself to mastering the knowledge and the skills. And then of course, there's the attitudes. And you know, every book we wrote began with how that person thinks, because we believe that attitude builds on everything. It is the foundation of everything. The way you approach life, the way you think your attitude makes all the difference in, in the world. And I think from a, from a top producing agent point of view, there's three attitudes. One is intention, that is, you make good things happen. You set goals, you have action plans, you uh, know why you want them, you know what you want, you know why you want it, you know how you're gonna do it. And as Gary Keller says, it's on your calendar <clears throat> so you know when you're gonna do it, time blocking. That's such a critical thing. And you allow yourself to be held accountable. So you make good things happen. So building that, that habit and, and of, of goal setting, of action planning, of do, using your 135 and your 411 is a big deal because that makes you a person of intention and top producers get things done. Number two is you, you're a person of optimism. There's a wonderful man who I highly recommend you read his books. His name is Dr. Martin Seligman, S-E-L-I-G-M-A-N, Martin, Dr. Martin Seligman. And, uh, he was president of the American Psychological Association and he stood up in front of their convention in 1998 and he said, we have spent decades studying mental disorders and mental disease. And now it's time for us to understand mental health and mental functioning. And he said, I'm gonna focus on that and I'm calling it positive psychology. So he founded positive psychology and what's happened with that in the last 20 years is astounding. There are so many wonderful books. One he wrote uh, called Learned Optimism, highly recommended. He said his first book he wrote was Learned Helplessness, How People Become Victims. Then his second book was called Learned Optimism, the opposite of being a victim, which is being in charge. So an optimist believes they can get good outcomes. An optimist doesn't believe it's gonna be easy. They're not Pollyannas and they always believe they can make a difference. They can improve their knowledge. They can improve their skills. Uh, they can 
They can get things done the way they want. They can change the outcomes because they're an optimist, not a Pollyanna. They're realists in the sense of they deal with what's really there, but they always feel they are in control. They're optimists. So number one, attitude, intention, number two, optimism. And the third one is pe uh, persistence. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this later, but the ability to hang in tough, as Linda said, this is a business where you get more no's uh, than you get yeses. And Gary Keller said, you fail your way to success and transactions will fall through and people will let you down and people will lie to you and people won't you know, um, respect you, but you have to keep going. And it's that mental toughness, that ability to persist that is so important. And it's, it's by the way, it's a, it's a character you can build. We're gonna talk about that later. So there are your three attitudes, intention, optimism, and persistence. And then it's thing to, the, the reason Keller Williams is unstoppable, there's three magical things about Keller Williams, at least three. You know, one is we know who we are and what we're doing. It's called the MVVBP. Um, and that stands for mission, visions, values, beliefs, and perspectives. We know, we know our mission to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, and lives worth living. Those are the big three. The two were added later, but those are the big three. And we know our vision to be the real estate company of choice for the best agents, the best brokers, and the best clients. And then we have our values. We said God, family, and business. Then we have our belief system, which is really 10. It was nine when now we added E, equity, opportunities for all in the Y4C2Ts, which is a powerful statement of our belief system. It underpins, that's what makes the culture of this company so strong compared to any other company. And then we know who we are, perspective. We know we think like a top producer. We think like we're only get paid when we get the job done. That's how we all think. Um, and we, we know that we are a training, consulting and technology company, cleverly disguised as a real estate franchise system, right? But our agents are the realtors. They're the ones doing the real estate we are providing them all the training, uh, uh, consulting, technology, and support they need. In fact, our, our Keller Williams Market Centers really should be called energy centers. That's what I call them, because it's a place where agents can come, plug in, power up, and go after their goals. All the support systems are here. And that leads to the seven foundational models. For 12 years, I taught franchise systems orientation, and everyone who ever joined us, every OP, every team leader, every MCA, got me to tell them our seven foundational models. And I'm not gonna take the time to do it now, but th this, th this is what makes Keller Williams unstoppable. We are better in every one of these models than any other real estate company out there, any. It's amazing. And those some agents have left because somebody was telling them blue sky somewhere else and they've come back and said, you know what? I didn't realize how much I had here, how much I really missed. And they, they made a lot of promises that they couldn't deliver on. And I really got to see their reality. But when I come into Keller Williams, the closer I get, the, the better the reality is. So the seven foundational models. And then finally we have, we're, we're preparing for the new age. We have command and consumer because we are all gonna use technology as a tool as a, as a tool, our database and how we use our database and how we inform our customers and bring them into the consumer experience on our database, we are gonna be and are already the technology company of the real estate industry. There is, there is no question there. No one's even close to us in that regard. So that's what makes Keller Williams unstoppable. And what I wanna do is, is uh, share with you um, three, you know, three books that you may be underusing. We, we wrote these books as a gift to the real estate industry, Gary and I and Jay. We really did. Uh, we, we wanted to give a gift to the real estate industry and we wanted to make Keller Williams famous, right? Though that was really what we wanted to do. And we did, of course. These three are the best selling books in the history of real estate. And MREA is number one, 1. 1.4 million copies sold amazing. And um, uh, uh, still, still on Amazon today, the number one real book in the real estate category today. And it was written 17 years ago. Why? Because it's built on timeless truths. And then there's MREI for investors. 
and then shift. See, it's interesting about shift because we wrote that as an extension of MREA, um, and but we wanted it to be more tactical, and so we we wrote it. You know, the twelve tactics of top agents in tough times, and uh, but it really contains the tactics of doing the real estate business. So I want just to take a, se a second to remind you of what's there, because a lot of people don't understand uh, what is really in these books. So I want to tell you one, you know, how we wrote them. Uh, so one of the things we knew was we were writing for people that get things done and move fast. They don't want to spend a lot of time reading through a dense book of copy. They want things to be understandable fast and they're bright. You guys that are in this business, you're bright, you're quick studies. And so what we did was we made this book very readable. It's full of, it's full of open space and headlines and cartoons and graphs and charts and inserted quotes, all of that. It, it's fun to read and you can scan it. In fact, you can just flip through it. It's so easy. And so what I would think you should have on the front of your desk, on the top of your desk should be MREA and next to it shift. Coil bound, go to FedEx or Office Depot, get them coil bound so they lay flat and you can flip through the pages real easily. Have that sitting on your desks because one is the strategic book and the other is the tactical book. And I'm going to cover those in just a second. And then off to your right is MREI, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor. And the first 150 pages of that is the best thing ever written on, on how to build wealth, how money works and how to build net worth and wealth. It's all there and then it leads naturally as it should into real estate. So uh, that book sits there. Now, what I have in front of you is what I've highlighted, the magical pages of MREA, the magical pages. Now you, right there, you see table of contents is 15 to 18 pages, right there, table of contents. Um, uh, so at 15 to 18 is the pages, so four pages. So you can just thumb through that and see you can, see, you can see everything that's in the book. And then you can scan and look at what you have. By the way, I want you to know, I'm a scanner. I love to read and I love business and I love personal development and I also love fiction, but I only read fiction in depth. The others I scan because I can get the ideas very quickly and it changes my mind. So I found two wonderful sources if you're a scanner too, if you just want to get knowledge, but you don't want to take that, time to read it all the detail and so there's two sources one is called blinkist.com b-l-i-n-k-i-s-t.com blinkist.com and what they've done is taken over a thousand books and condensed them down to 15 minutes 15 minute read or a 15 minute audio you can download an audio audio file and listen to it on your way to an appointment, you can get a whole book in 15 minutes. So that's called Blinkist.com. Now, I found a little later another site uh, similar called 12min.com, 12min.com, 12min. And they've taken another bunch over a thousand books, different books, and they've condensed them down to 12 minutes, a 12 minute read or a 12 minute audio. So both of those, Blinkist and 12 Min, highly recommend it if you want to, if you're learning based, but you want things in a quick way, you want to, you want to capture them fast. Because most authors write way too much copy in their books. They just do the main ideas you can get fast and they're there. So anyway, there's a couple of ideas if you're if you like to learn fast and you're a scanner. Now let me let me show you the magical pages. I've got them highlighted, page 71 are the nine ways an MREA thinks. This is, gets down to the thinking, the commitment to service and standards and all the way up to your big why. Then page 95 is a listing presentation on one page. You could make a copy of page 95 of MREA, take it into a listing appointment and just read it to, your, to the prospective seller. And that would be better than 95% of all listing presentations they'll ever get from anybody because it tells them exactly what you're going to do. It's wonderful. And there's also one at the bottom of the page for buyers. So for a buyer rep agreement, that page 95 is magic. Page 122 is magical. All four models of the MREA, the, the, uh, the economic model, 
the uh, lead generation model, the budget model, and the organizational model is all there on one page, all graphically expressed in one page. You could blow that up and put it over your desk and it would guide your career right there. Then we go into the whole things on how to build a referral-based business and how your database is your business and how to do your eight by eights and 12 directs and 33 touch and how to use your database in that effective way. It's all there, it's powerful, it's powerful. And then there's the, the whole path, page 196 to, um, 203, page 196 to 203 is everything about leverage, how to take your business from you doing it and then adding people on first admin, then maybe a buyer specialist, that kind of thing, all the way up to the seventh level. That's all on seven pages, seven pages graphically presented. You can see the whole thing right there, what your whole career path could be and then how to build teamwork. And then, of course, the five steps of high achievement. So powerful, powerful. And I'll send you a copy of this, by the way. I'll send you a copy of all my slides and I'll send you a copy of this uh, and two other things I'm gonna tell you in a minute. All you have to do is write me, daveatkw.com, write that down, dave, D-A-V-E, at kw.com. Send me your three ahas, three ahas you got from this presentation. Any three, I'm not judging them. I just want to know three things that stood out for you. We call them ahas, insights that you're going to go use, ahas. So send me three of those, and then I will send you all these slides and three other items, including this MREA key pages, right? And I'll send them to you by Friday. Promise that. So Dave at kw.com. So let's, let's, uh, Take a look then, and a lot of people don't under, really understand the power of the book Shift. See, um, so how did we come to write this? Well, see, we knew we had written an all-time bestseller with MREA. We already knew that. And it was about four years later, almost five, and we said, you know, okay, is it time to write a, an MREA 2, a, a revised edition, make any changes? ways you do the business, the way you lead generate and what you say. Uh, all of that is, um, is very, is very important, right? Very important. And so, uh, so we, uh, so we put the tactics in this book and we, because the market was shifting, because it was dropping from a seller's market to a buyer's market, we called it shift. But the truth is these, te these techniques and tactics work in any market. And then we say that in the book. So the thing to remember about shift is um, focus on chapter four through nine and chapter 12. Those are relevant in every market. Chapter four is find the motivated, all about lead generation, asking for business and attracting business, offer response marketing, what to do with your three hours of lead generation. Right there, page 79, that's all there. Then how to convert leads into appointments, all the scripts and dialogues for doing that. And then in working with sellers, how to get them to price it right and stage it so it will sell for more. All the techniques and all of the scripts and dialogues are there. And then with buyers, how to get them to have a sense of urgency in markets, not just like one we have now with low inventory, but how to get them to effectively make buying decisions. And that's called building urgency. And then find chapter 12, is bulletproofing the transaction, how to keep the transaction together all the way to closing, right? I mean, that's that's a big deal. So shift, and shift doesn't have uh, this detailed table of contents like, like our other books. It just has a one page, the 12 tactics. So what this is here, this two pages is more of a detailed outline of what's really there. So it's a great guide for you to remember and know what's there. And in addition, what I want to, and I'll send that to you, send Dave at kw.com, your three ahas, and I'll send this, this document to you. But I'll also send you, if you look on here, the new forward by Gary Keller. So in 2012, there was a, a new forward put into shift, you know, uh, five years after it was written. And 
Uh, it's the best, it's 16 pages long. And to me, it's the best 16 pages ever written on high achievement. It's the best 16 pages ever written on how to be a high achiever. And it comes out of a discussion with his son, John, when he's a teenager. So it's perfectly written to appeal to teenagers or young adults. So if you have someone in your life that's a teenager, young adult, and you'd like to have them get a good message about how to become an achiever in their life and why, this 16 pages will do it. So I'll send you a digital copy of that because some of you, if you have the old version or you have the Kindle version, it doesn't have this new forward in. I'll send you a digital copy so you can make copies and give it to any young people that you want to share it with. It's powerful. I'll send that to you. Remember, Dave at KW.com. Send me your three aha. So I'll send you this detailed outline of shift, detailed outline of MREA, and Gary's uh, new forward to this um, uh, on how to be a high achiever. Okay, we'll do that. Now, these, so I want to, I just want to make it clear that, that, that these three uh, really are there for you. Use these resources. Let them guide your career. Let them be your foundational part. That's what we meant them for. Uh, they're, they're a gift to you, and it will underpin what you want to achieve, right? Now, I want to shift gears in our, uh, the rest of our time together. I want to focus on how to deal with the, with, with the difficulties in this business, not just the failures, but the challenges. See, we're in a fear-based culture. We know that. I mean, not just the COVID and all, all of that and people threatening that they're going to change, get away, give, you know, take away freedoms and overspend and all that stuff. But the thing to remember is that's the nature of the culture we are in. And in 2004, Michael Crichton, great author, wrote a book called State of Fear. And he said, we are, we, the reason we are in a state of fear is that three big entities are want to make us afraid. Big politics, big business, and big media. And they all want us to be afraid to vote for them, to use their products, or to give them control. Uh, and then, or to pay attention to their news. So we have all of these fear-driven messages happening in our culture right now. And our job is we need to manage our way through that. In fact, we need to be the rock of Gibraltar for other people around us. We need to be the steadiest person. You know, we need to be that because, because our kids, children are getting freaked out over things that they shouldn't be fearful of. And yet that's what the, the media and the social media and the culture is doing. So First, let's talk about fear. So the classic response to fear is fight, flight, right? We know that fight, flight, you either get, you know, road rage, angry at somebody, strike out at them, or you run away, you flight, right? And, um, or the third thing that is people freeze, like a deer in the headlights. They just freeze up and don't, they can't move. They don't know what to do. A lot of people in real estate get frozen. They don't know what to do in their daily activities. They get frozen. Um, so fear can freeze you. But we say there's three other Fs that you really want to do. Face, focus, and figure it out. Face it calmly. Don't panic. Look fear in the face and say, okay, I'm looking at you. Then focus. What am I, what am I seeing? What should I, am I really afraid? Should I be afraid? Um, maybe not. How could I get through it? Then figure your way past it right? Figure out how to get past the fear, maybe with someone else helping you get on the other side. And here's what we say. Susan Jeffers in her wonderful book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, says when you get to the other side of fear, you look back and go, what was I afraid of? Why was I so fearful? There wasn't that much to be afraid of. I was inventing it, right? Get to the other side of fear. We say in MREI, money lies on the other side of fear. Success lies on the other side of fear. Confidence lies on the other side of fear. When you overcome your fears, you grow in your confidence. There's no question. And then the final thing I want to say in this, on this page is let fear be your compass. Here's what I learned in my life. See, I was afraid of public speaking, but I went and learned how to do it. Uh, and I was afraid of speaking my mind and, and being assertive. 
I learned how to do it, right? I was meant to do it. I knew I needed that. But here's the one test I had. Uh, when I taught the Dale Carnegie sales course, I did this, at first I took it, and then I came back as a graduate assistant, and then they asked me to become an instructor. And it wasn't a full-time job. Remember, that was kind of a hobby. I had a full-time job, but uh, they asked me to become an instructor, and I went, well, okay, sounds good. So I started to you know, co-teach, and I started to practice, and I memorized all the things you have to memorize. You have to memorize a ton of things in Dale Carnegie to teach because they don't let you have any notes up front in front of the class. So we had to do all this memorization. And then finally, to get certified as a Dale Carnegie instructor, I had to go teach a, a sample class in New York for three weekends in a row with two or three other instructor candidates and standing in the back of the room was a retired New York detective by the name of Dominic. And Dominic was the gatekeeper for instructors with Dale Carnegie. And if you didn't think you were good enough, you weren't gonna be certified as an instructor. And I've always been afraid of being judged, particularly by authority figures, right? So I kind of wasn't looking forward to this. And I went into the, the Institute director in Albany, New York and said, you know what? I got a lot on my plate. I really don't have time to go do this. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm not going to do it. And he said, Dave, I know you're afraid, but I think you should do it. And I kind of reluctantly went, um, all right, I went. Well, I will tell you, those three weekends were highlights of my life. I had so much growth. I loved it so. It went so well. I got a high five from Dominic. He said, you're going to be good. And here's the thing. If I had let fear stop me, I wouldn't be here with you today. I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have been... Uh, with Keller Williams and, and a co-author of the books. I wouldn't have been a divisional president for Century 21. I wouldn't have been a regional director. If I had let fear stop me, I wouldn't have become any of those things. And remember, fear is your compass because if you're afraid of it, you're meant to do it. See, if you're not afraid of it, if you then it's either you're okay to do it or you're blasé, you don't care. But if you care about the outcome, but you're afraid, then you were meant to do it, like calling for sale by owners or asking for business or doing a listing presentation. You may be a little afraid of it, but it's only because you really want to do it. You care about the outcome. If you care about the outcome, and the only thing is you're worried about the outcome won't work. You might love to teach a class to others, but you're afraid that you'll kind of mess it up and embarrass yourself, uh, but you really want to do it. So if you want to do something, that's what's causing the fear. Therefore, do what you fear and the fear will be gone and you will get to a good place just like I have, right? So learn to deal with fear. Now, one of the neat things that happened for me was that a year ago or two years ago now, I reached out to Gary Keller when he stepped back in. I'd been ten, a year ten away from Keller Williams for 10 years, hadn't been to a family reunion in 10 years. And I stepped away. Uh, to, to do other entrepreneurial things. I helped build another national company called Master Networks. I built their university, Master Networks University. I helped their founder write his key book, Five Plus One, The Entrepreneur's Formula for Success. So I did some similar things to what I did at Keller Williams, but in the general business community. But then in, uh, uh, in, uh, 19, in 2019, uh, I reached out to Gary when he stepped back in as CEO and we had a cup of tea together. And then I started going to regional director meetings. And now I've been re-engaged. And a year ago, in February of 2020, at the convention in Dallas, they asked me to do a breakout session. And they gave me the largest room, 3,600 seats in the second stage, it was called, at the Dallas Convention Center. And so I was going to do a, a topic was called Light My Fire, um, the, the Power of Self-Mastery light my fire, the power of self-mastery. So I'm back getting wired up and I knew I hadn't been to family reunion in 10 years and the company had grown so much. I figured that nobody knew Dave Jenks, you know, that I'd get introduced, I'd come out on stage and, you know, there'd be like two or 300 people spread out all over these 3,600 seats, but no, it was packed, standing room only, some people turned away. It was a wonderful experience, but I wanna share with you the message I gave to them. Because when Gary Keller and I were building the six personal perspectives in Keller Williams University, he made an interesting comment. He said, Dave, I come from a long line of lethargic people. That's why I need written goals. That's why I need time blocking. That's why I need accountability. If I didn't have those things, I would not be uh, a person who, who got things done. And I went, whoa, well, thank you, Gary, for 
revealing that to me, I said, you know, I come from a long line of depressed people. My grandfather uh, was depressed for the last 20 years in a nursing home, basically catatonic. My dad had anger management and mood swing issues. And when I turned 30 years old, I started to have cyclical depression. I would go into these deep, funky times of everything looked bleak and I was judgmental of myself and I was feeling terrible. In fact, at age 39, I almost committed suicide. I almost committed suicide, very close. Had a little conversation with God, didn't know what I was going to do, but I decided not to take my own life. And I got reconnected. And as I started to then re-energize, I realized I needed to manage my emotions. I needed to take care of this. And I went, ran into a wonderful book called Feeling Good, Feeling Good by Dr. David Burns, a cognitive psychologist. And in it, he describes the 10 ways we talk to ourselves that are dysfunctional, that take us into anxiety and panic and doubt and depression. And I read it and I looked that there were five ways that I talked to myself that were leading me in this anxiety and depression direction. And so I said, okay, I'm stopping that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. And I started to work on the techniques for managing my emotions and my mindset. And man, I'll tell you what, since then I've been one of the most powerful, optimistic, can-do people it, around. In fact, it was funny, Sharon Gibbons, the chief financial officer of Keller Williams uh, back when I first joined, she would say to other staff members, if you're having a bad day, go see Dr. Feelgood, go see Dave. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll come out of that feeling really good. So I, I became Dr. Feelgood, which is interesting, right? But it's because I learned the self-mastery of my emotional life. And I want to share what I learned with you very briefly right now. I call It's called Light My Fire. And F-I-R-E is a acronym. I know we've gone beyond three. We got four now, but I'm going to do it because it's really good. Um, and that is, so it's freedom, intention, resilience, and enthusiasm. That's what you want to build into your life. First, you need to give yourself freedom, right? This is very important. This is where health is. The health is in a sense of personal freedom. And it comes from a book by Ogmandino, Ogmandino, great, great writer, called The Greatest Miracle in the World. And in it, he gets a memo from God. And God says, I have created life to be abundant and you can have anything you want if you will do these four things. One, count your blessings. Wow, that was such an important lesson for me. Now I begin every day by counting my blessings. And if I'm having a, the start of a downtime, I'll remind myself of what I am grateful for and blessed in in my life. And that just changes my, my outlook to another place. So count your blessings. Number two, Affirm your uniqueness. He said, I've created every human being to be unique and different from each other. You get to do life your way. Make your decisions. You get to do it. Don't be worried about how you compare with others or compete with others. Don't worry about other people's opinions. Do it your way. Do it because affirm your uniqueness. So count your blessings, affirm your uniqueness. Three is use your God-given power to choose. God said, I've created life to, for you to have free will. You're meant to make decisions, make decisions, go for goals, decide what you're going to eat, decide where you're going to go to uh, the restaurant, be decisive. Now you can always change your mind later, but be decisive because I've given you the power to choose. So use your God-given power to choose. Now the fourth one is, is really belongs under resilience, but it's, it's go another mile. The fourth thing is go another mile, not go the extra mile, go another mile, just keep slogging one foot in front of the other, just keep going at it. I, I was reminded as I came out of Alcoholics Anonymous, I had to overcome my addiction to alcohol. And I went to my 90 meetings in 90 days and we got a little silver chip and on it, it said one day at a time. And we carried that with us, see, because we weren't committing to a lifetime of sobriety. We were committing to one day at a time of sobriety and then another day and then another day. And now here I am, you know, 21 years later, sober for 21 years. But it was one day at a time. It's a great thing to remember. Just go one more day, just one day at a time. So freedom. Count your blessings. Affirm your uniqueness. Use your God-given power to choose. 
Freedom, live in gratitude. Then intention, we've been through this. Be a person who gets things done, who has goals, right? Who knows what they want, why they want it, how they're going to get it, when they're going to do it, and they allow themselves to be held accountable. Because when you're on purpose, when you have goals and you're going after them, you don't get discouraged. You might get disappointed a little in the short run. You know, something goes wrong. It doesn't work out quite the way you want. But, but if you're active and you're going for goals, you won't get discouraged. You will have a can-do positive attitude. So be a person of intention. Build that into your life. Be on purpose. And then this is a big one, resilience. I had, I had a, a, an agent come to me and say, you know, Dave, I want to be the calmest person in the transaction. I want to be the calmest person in the transaction. I love that, you know, and she said, I really have worked on that. So the thing is, how can you stay calm in the chaos? How can you work at getting your emotions in, in order? Well, my wife, Gina, and I have developed another acronym called MELT, M-E-L-T, melt away the stress. We, and she works with women's empowerment, and she is powerful with helping women get their lives back in order and their confidence built up and their clarity uh, and getting control of their lives. And this acronym goes like this. We call it MELT, M-E-L-T, melt away the stress. M stands for meditate. And I've been meditating. I've been practicing meditation for 40 years. I learned it from the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, the guy who trained the Beatles. Um, not from him, but one of his staff. And so I, I have my mantra and I can relax myself virtually instantly. I can go into a an alpha state for maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes, and I come out all refreshed. My wife, who's a hypnotherapist, actually takes it deeper. She takes people to a theta level that's deeper than alpha level under in the subconscious, and you can put in new messages, and you come out of that incredibly creative and refreshed. I get a treatment from her every two weeks, and I pay for it because I don't, I want to be a client, not a, not a husband, right? I mean, I want to be a husband, but I want to be treated in this case, like a client. So I pay it. So meditate, learn to meditate. It's a great way to, to calm yourself. E exercise. And this doesn't mean go for a workout. This means just, if you're under stress, go for a walk, climb the stairs, shake awake, do something physical that releases the stress. So meditate, exercise, laugh. There's nothing better than a belly laugh to release stress. So watch your favorite co co comedians on YouTube. Uh, enjoy that. Laugh. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at life's absurdity sometimes. Laugh at the silly things that happen and that you do, right? Laugh. And then the final one, the T is train. And this is the Gary Keller one. I mean, Gary at Family Reunion has maybe 16, 17, 18 sessions in a row from the vision speech to meetings with top agents to meetings with uh, market center owners, uh, to meetings with regional directors, you know, all of these masterminds, all of these meetings. And every time he shows up, you know, he's supposed to be Gary, the guru. He's supposed to be the guy who knows and is in charge. And he does it with calmness and, but, and preparation. He has learned himself to deal, taught himself to deal with the stress. And then how many people have seen the movie uh, done by National Geographic called Free solo, free solo, about Alex Honnold, who climbs in, in 2017, climbs the 3,000 sheer granite face of El Capitan uh, in Yosemite National Park. 3,000 feet of nothing but straight up granite rock. And he climbs it without any ropes, without any security, just his fingers, his little climbing shoes, and a bag of chalk to keep his hands dry, that's it. And it takes him four hours and he climbs that. And at every moment, if, if a hand slips or whatever, he's gone. It's scary. Even the cameramen who were themselves climbers couldn't watch. They would turn away. They had the camera pointed at him, but they would look the other way when he got to some tricky points where we had to reach out one foot way out to, a, to another uh, slight foothold. Anyway, they talked to him afterwards. And here's what he said. This is the lesson for us. He said, it's preparation. He said, I've been preparing for this climb for 10 years. I've been with ropes. I've been, I knew every handhold, every foothold, all the way up, all the way up that 3,000 feet. He said, so when I decided to finally do it, it was like a walk in the park. I knew everything that I was going to do.
So preparation. The second thing he said, though, was interesting. He said, I never think about consequences. Yeah, I know. I know there's a serious consequence if I miss. But he said, I don't even think about that. He said, I don't know. He said, I just am focused on what to do right now. I am just focused on what I'm doing right now. So there's a great lesson. Be focused on the moment, your activity in the moment. Don't care about the outcome or the consequences. Don't let that get in your mind, right? So there you are, M-E-L-T, melt away the stress, be resilient, stay calm and focused in everything you do. And the final one is the God-given one. It's enthusiasm. Entheos is Greek for the God within. And that is, we're all imbued with this God force inside us. We see it with children. They're all enthusiastic and it's, they're always curious. Why, why, why? And they want to they wanna gain their competency. They want to ride a bike. Then they fall off and then they cry and then they get back on, right? They keep trying because they want to do it. They have this amazing energy that can't be knocked down. And we lose that somehow as we get older. And it's important to reconnect to that inner child, not the naive part, but the energetic, enthusiastic, curious, want to get better at things part of it, you know, let that enthusiasm drive you. May the force be with you. So th there it is. Light my fire, the power of self-mastery. It's about freedom, intention, resilience, and enthusiasm. Live in gratitude, be on purpose, stay calm and focused, and may the force be with you. <laughs> now, I want to close with three things. We said power comes in threes, magic in three. Got three things. Then we're going to open it up for any comments or questions. But remember, write me, dave at kw.com. Give me three ahas, any three insights, pieces that stood out for you in this presentation. And then by Friday, I will send you all these slides, right? You have all these slides. Number two, I'll send you the, the, the detailed magical pages of MREA and SHIFT. I'll send you Gary Keller's uh, new intro to SHIFT. On, on why be a high achiever. And then I will throw in a, 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 my 10 top books for dealing with adversity, including the Feeling Good book I mentioned by Dr. David Burns. So I'll include all of that in just send me your three ahas, okay? Here's what I wanna leave you with. Three things to remember. First of all, understand that life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. As you see it, show, so shall it be. As you think, so will it happen. As Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're going to be right. So get real clear because you create your own life. Life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Second of all, don't be naive. There will be challenges. Things will go wrong. Just take them on. Just work your way through it. There's a wonderful book by M. Scott Peck called The Road Less Traveled. And the first sentence of that book is, life is difficult. The second sentence is, and when you understand and accept that it is, it gets a little easier. Wonderful book, The Road Less Traveled. The Buddhists say life is suffering. So things going wrong and all that stuff is just a part of life. In fact, when I was coming out of um, Alcoholics Anonymous and sharing that story with my son, my youngest son, Jeff, and he said something to me that I will never forget, and it's guided my life since. He said, Dad, isn't it wonderful? God gives us the bread of adversity and the water of affliction so that we can grow spiritually. Amazing. My own son, what wisdom in that. God gives us the bread of adversity and the water of affliction so we can grow spiritually. See, maybe that's why we're here. Maybe that's why it isn't easy. Maybe that's why things go wrong. Maybe that's why there is our disappointments because that's how we grow spiritually. There will be challenges, take them on. And then the final thing I just wanna say to you is, this is a great game we play. Real estate's a great game. We're with a great company. Enjoy the journey and remember, you are the magic. All right, here we go. Hi, Lisa, you're highlighted right on my screen. Hi, wow, Hi. What, a, what a, that was amazing. Um, 
Well, magic I, comes in threes and here we are, you know. Apparently, and I absolutely love the melt. Um, I, the meditation, the exercise, the laugh and the train. And I have been trying to do the exercise and the meditation, but the laughing has been a little lacking lately. So I appreciate it. Has, the has it? No, we have to. That's right. We have to find ways to intentionally do that, right? And if we can get ourselves a little more to that sense of humor about the craziness that's around us, then we're in a better place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate those reminders. Thank you. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, this is a challenging time. It is. And by the way, we are inherently in a challenging business. I mean, everyone's talking today about there's no inventory and you know multiple offers and all that stuff. But it wasn't all that long ago where we were trying to find any buyer ready to buy, right? Yeah. Uh, when, the, when the, you know, 10 years ago when the market crashed, you know, so the thing, remember, it's, that's the front end of shift. I, I say read chapter four through nine, because that's the pragmatic how-to section and chapter 12. But the first three chapters are about the cyclical nature of the real estate business. It goes up, it goes down, it goes from buyer's markets to seller's markets. Interest rates go up and down. When I started in the business, interest rates were above 15%. Can you believe that? Mortgage rates were above 15%. I remember we were saying to each other, you know, if, if the interest rates ever go below 10, we're not going to screw it up like we did this time. <laughs> you know, so here we are bouncing around, down around three. It's astounding. So, but they'll go back up again. And that's one of the reasons that we, but the thing is that people need us to make it through these complex transactions in complex times. And so all of those things I said, that's why I say it is rocket science. And we have to dedicate ourselves to really getting good at this game. Yeah. Anybody else? Any, if anyone has a question, you can chat it in. Uh, I'm looking at the chat. Or if you just want to, you know, unmute yourself and say hi and, and, and uh, either ask a question or, uh, or a Give us an aha. Hi, Dave. It's Holly. I just Hi, wanted Holly. to say that this has just been a really great, great class. Um, I appreciate you sharing all of your um, things that have gone on in your life with the yes. depression and the alcoholism. I, I just think that sometimes hearing real things help other people uh, to understand that life is not always good. There you go. Thank and you so much. I, I so appreciate everything that you've said through this whole thing. No, thank you. And that the challenges can be met, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I would look back and say, and that's one of the reasons I don't have any embarrassment no. uh, about the things in my life that were a challenge. They were just there. Yes. And what I want to share with other people is you can get by those, you know? Yeah, good. Our team was Thank speaking you. yesterday about um, about kind of those things that are going wrong and let's talk about our wins. And I brought up the point that it's really important for us to remember to give ourselves grace. Yes. Grace is just, just ginormous. And that, that means many things to different people, but grace is, is key. No, grace is key. It really is whether you take a deeply spiritual view of that or you take that as just don't be judgmental against yourself. Don't put yourself down. I mean, that's one of the things that Dr. David Burns says in his book, you know, feeling good is don't put yourself down. Do not be a critic. I mean, the world has enough critics in it. You don't need to be a critic there for yourself, right? And you can get to better places without focusing on what you're dissatisfied with. Get focused on where you want to go. And, and then the other thing, as Linda McKissick loves to say, you know, um, have gratitude, have gratitude for what, be thankful for what you have while going after what you want. So we're in the business of going after higher goals and trying to do better, but we don't do it from dissatisfaction. We do it from gratitude. Thank you. Give yourself grace. I like that. Dave, I always heard something cool that was, um, want what you have. And I that's thought right. that was an no. interesting way of looking I at it. I think that's that's really want what you have. You know, uh, Jonathan, thank you. And thank you for making this happen, by the way. You were you reached out to me initially and and talked about bringing me to Columbus. And thank you for, for your make, you know, stirring the pot 
and making this happen. And I, I appreciate that Brian was supportive of this and everyone on the team. One of the things I say to people, I say, you know, a lot of people say, uh, do what you love and the money will follow. And I said, my experience is love what you do and the opportunities will follow. Mm-hmm. In other words, just what, I mean, it's kind of an off spin of what you were saying. I've often found is whatever you're doing, do it with love. I mean, do it with enthusiasm, do it with energy, do it with learning the best you can from where you are. And what will happen is that'll lead you to your next opportunity, right? Wherever that is, I, I often tell people, I really only applied for one job, my first job ever. Every other job came from people watching me do that job really well. <laughs> you said that, and we've implemented that being, um, as like one of our strategies on our team is like, let people watch you work. Like you'll just, you'll demand the respect. You will attract the business. Um, our director of operations, when I was taking a position with, um, it was just a fundraising for here in local in Columbus, yes. and it was just to be part of that. She said, and I said, gosh, I don't know if I'm going to waste my time. And, you know, I'm not that great at doing those kinds of things because I'm, I, to me, I don't know how productive they are. And that's my own limiting belief. And she said, well, it turns into business because there's nothing there. There's no like agenda, but people can watch you work. There you and go. then they, they take an interest in what you do and then they'll see and they correlate the two. And I mean, that's just, it, it's not a matter of, oh, let me put on a show. It's who you are. It's who you are. And so right. you do it with that intention, right? And you know, the outcome will be, it's that reputation thing, right? Build great relationships, let them see how honest and hardworking and creative you are. And then that will lead to a reputation where people want to do business with you. Exactly. Uh, no, so Jonathan, I um, thank you for doing this too, because Rachel and I were in the crowd for Light Your Fire in, in Dallas. And Rachel's yeah. my wife and she's the, the leader. of. Now you guys sent me a team. nice note after that, by the way. Thank you. I mean, we walked out of there stunned. And it was, and Paula Linehan, right, is a very, very close friend of ours. And, and we, she said, oh my gosh, I love Dave Jenksy if he remembers me. And that's why we were kind of chit-chatting with you about it. But um, in this short time, you know, I, I bought the two books that you mentioned, Learned Optimism and The Warrior Elite on Audible. And then I bought the um, Dr. Feelgood book in, in hard copy. So my question is, yeah, we sit in these trains, right? And then we go back yes. to our days and our agents and we're so busy in such a challenging market. How do you maintain the discipline of meditating, of reading, of, of, of really working on yourself before you dive into business? Because I know I we get so it, distracted. It's a great, no, no, you're, 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 it's a good thing. You know, when we get pumped up or we get in, you know, we, we get, uh, uh, energized or we get alerted by some, you know, attending something like this. And then, so the question we say to our, that's why I'm asking people to send me their ahas. One thing you do is, is capture the, what are the three things? And I, I, I like the magic comes in threes, but what are the three or four things that you heard today that really you, you're ready to put in your life, right? You're ready to apply it. And then just do those. Don't try and do more than that, right? Just do those. The other is, see, Gary Keller started every day. I just had a wonderful session here in Plano with them on getting what you want. And I said, what I learned from Gary Keller was he, he almost never got into work before 9 or 9.30. And he almost would, always was gone at 3.30. But here's the guy who's built the greatest real estate company in the history of the world. And here's why. His morning was dedicated. He, he puts it right in the book with starting out with meditation and reading those things he wanted to be reminded of, then doing a workout, then having breakfast with his family, wanted that love piece in there, then planning for his day, and then he shows up at work, see? So he built it into the start of his day to make sure there was that think time, that reading time, that meditation time, and then the other is to say to yourself, okay, if I can master this, this technique of meditation, then how can I find five minutes in the middle of the day to just go get quiet, just get quiet and practice that centering of my mind and come back out of it with that refreshed thought, right? They always said Thomas Edison was a master of taking naps. So I think sometimes whether it's a nap or it's a meditation, something that gives you a little relief in the middle of the day is a good thing. And then the final thing I would just say, Jonathan, is that it's repetition. 
See, I would highly recommend that somebody, if they found this session valuable, that they gather together a couple of other people and watch it again. And then maybe do it once a month for a couple months and get the repetition. Because I think, and I've found the things that have stuck with me the most are the things that I've allowed to be repeated to me in my mind, right? Like the book, Feeling Good. I've probably, I've read through that fully at least three times, but I've scanned it and gone back to the 10 dysfunctional ways we talk to ourselves and reviewed that, you know, more times. And the other thing, the reason I, I uh, highlighted the, 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 um, the sources of Blinkist and 12 Men is that that is a great way if you can get like a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and the seven habits are right there or the 10 ways, the dysfunctional ways we think are right there. So if you can take these great books and take the heart of them and have that kind of in front of you all the time, that's, that's beneficial. And then the other, I'm gonna, I said that was the last thing, but the last thing would be in a team environment like you're talking about, put stuff up on the wall. That's why we, we like the six personal perspectives up there. We like the Y4C, Y4C2Ts up there. You know, we, 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 we like the three Ls, whatever it is, sort of graphically have in your environment reminders of the way that you want to, where your foundation is. Thank you. Hi, Dave. Yeah. Well, thanks is... for making this happen. Hi, Lorraine. Is... Yeah, it's it's Lori, and I was a. Oh, it's Century Lori. 20... Hi, Lori. Yeah, Century Twenty One broker many years ago. So it's great to see you again. I just wanted to thank you personally. No, oh, thank you for that. Um, Isn't it? it's amazing how many how many how many former Century Twenty One people are now part part of part KW? Of it's amazing. Yeah, Mo Anderson being one. Oh, well, she's the leader, yeah. And me. And so it's good to be um, to be seeing you again. So I am the broker of this amazing market center. So I wonderful. I uh, you know, so I you heard you. me, you, you heard some... me, you heard me tell them, right? Yep. To pay attention to you. <laughs> and um, so I want to thank you. You gave some some really important nuggets today. So thanks for being with us. Well, thank you. You know, I have such respect for people who really have done the uh, the work to really understand the depth of this real estate industry. People, have, many people have such a surface look at this real estate industry, and we are built on people who care about transactions, who care about doing it right, who make sure that things are done accurately, and then also that you train the agents so they don't make mistakes. That's so important. We sure yeah. try. And you're and you're there to and you're there to back them up. I'm always amazed when when people will go to some other company that doesn't have a really solid broker sitting right there next to them in the office, right? They're, they're, they're winging it over there and the, the chance they're taking to not have, you know, that kind of, of guidance and support that they can go down the hall to, or if there's a issue with a customer or an issue with the MLS that they've got you there going to bat for them. That's such a big deal. Thanks. She's one of the best big shoes to fill, Lori. She well, you know, us. well, I hope, I hope she doesn't empty her shoes. We need, <laughs> we need her here. Um, it's in a 42 year career. So 44 years. Well, that's it. And you love it, don't you? You still do. I can I tell it in do. your eyes. You, mm -hmm. still, you still just love it because I know that you really like working with the agents mm -hmm. and helping them get the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Well, you're welcome. And thank, I want to thank Jonathan again. I want to thank everyone, uh, Brian and, and Joanne and everyone that was, you know, made it, made it possible for me to be here because uh, they had to make an investment to have that happen. So and I love this company and love to be doing this. Thank you. So next month, All right, right, everybody. What's that? Next month. We'll see you next month. Yeah. yeah. What do we? Okay. We have. Uh, we have. What do we have coming up? Uh, okay. Do we have a session next month? I'm looking for it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hang on a second.
Yes, we have on May 12th. Yeah, on May 12th, we have Why List With Me, which you will, I will tell you, get packed the Zoom room because agents are going to get lifted out of their chairs with that. I really mean it. There is so much power in, packed into that hour and 15 minutes. And, and, and all of it is confidence building. I mean, it's not just, it's not intimidating. It's, it's giving people real tools they can go and use right away. Uh, so yes, make I'm sure excited. everyone's there. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Enjoy Take care, week, everybody. And we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jonathan, hey. great class. Thank Thanks. you.